Okay, for this video, let's go ahead and talk about the normal distribution with respect to like our just kind of how it falls into our continuous random variables. And we're going to talk about using uh, our numerical data and when it follows kind of a bell shape. So let's look at this one. So it says Harry has been studying the athletic performance of top cross or XFIT athletes. Uh, he knows that the winners of the XFIT games can clean 221 pounds uh, with a variance of 441 pounds squared. And note that cleans are a type of lift. If you want to see what they are, go look them up online. And Harry has been following a particularly promising athlete, Jack, who can clean 251 pounds. Okay, so we have a couple pieces of information here. The first one we have is mu. And before I do that, let me see if I can't increase yeah, the size. There we go. We've got mu is equal to 221, or that's the typical amount of weight that these cross, that these X fitters can clean. Okay, then the next thing that we have is we have that sigma squared, or I'll just do sig2, is equal to uh, 441. Now, I really want sigma here. It's going to help me out. So I'm going to say sigma is equal to the square root of sig2 or sigma squared. And when I hit enter, it didn't show anywhere. If you actually go up and look in this spot that's called environment, it will list out all the variables that we have established. And here it has sigma as equaling 21. Kind of cool. I am going to hide this though, just so that we've got enough room uh, to actually see what we're doing. Okay, so now that we have those, we know that we have a fully defined normal distribution. So let's go in and look at our basic statistics. Uh, let's go look at our normal distribution and let's plot this thing first. So we know that the mean is equal to 221 and the standard deviation is equal to 21. And we don't need, let's not shade it yet, and we'll click OK. And here's our distribution centered at 21 with the standard deviation of, uh, of 21. Okay, so it says what percent of crossfitters can clean more than Jack? Okay, so Jack can do 251, and we want to know what percentage can do more. Let's do a quick graphic of this. Let's go back to our statistics and Let's plot this guy again. And we're going to plot from 251. And then as long as we choose a number that's pretty big, you know, we can choose something like, I don't know, 400. It's just got to be bigger than like whatever's at the bottom of your graphic. Then if when we click OK, we see that our region has been shaded in. So if I had to make a guess, I'd say, I don't know, 7% or something like that, clean more than Jack. So let's see if my guess uh, is any good. So I'm going to minimize that guy out and let's actually solve this thing now. So when we go back to our normal distribution we can go over to what are called our probabilities and we click OK and we know that the mean once again 221 the standard deviation is 21 and our variable value is 251. Now if we clicked on the lower tail let's just do it and we click OK we see that the percentage that it gives us is like 92% of the area under the curve. And what we guessed was like 7%. So we know that we had a huge problem there. So what we can do instead is go back to our probabilities and click the upper tail. And now, yep, it's basically dead on to that kind of 7% that I guessed. And we'll paste it right there. Okay. So he says Harry also knows that just being able to have a massive clean is not a perfect indicator that contestants will do well in the game. In fact, winners have had a clean weight between 175 and 243 pounds. What percent of CrossFit athletes are within the optimal zone for clean weights? Okay, well, let's go and check it out. Once again, let's do a graph just so that we have a visual of what's going on. So they said between 100 and 75 and a maximum of 243 and if we click OK give me a second there it is we've got this region 
and just looking at this region, I'd guess, I don't know, maybe 60, uh, maybe 60 or 70 percent of this area under the curve. Now, I might be wrong, but it's at least going to get me into the ballpark. Okay, so let's actually calculate it now. Let's go to our basic statistics, coming over to our normal distribution and our probabilities. And here we're going to go f uh, between 243, comma, 175. We still have our standard deviation and our mean. I'm going to click on the lower tail now. Just we're going to go to the left of 243 and the left of 175, which would be the left from here minus the left from here, which will give us the area between those two. Okay, so I can go ahead and click OK now. And I get these two probabilities. And I'll subtract them from one another. And we see 83. Okay, so my guess was a little bit worse this that last time, but it still kind of gives me into the, the ballpark. Okay, and then it says Harry knows that athletes at the bottom 14 of the clean weights are not able to compete at the national championships. What's the minimum clean to be able to enter into the national championship competition? Okay, so this is a different type of question. This is instead, instead of us looking for the percentage um, from a specific critical point, we are given the percentage and we have to figure out what the critical point is. It's actually not very difficult. All we need to do is use a different tool. So when we go to our normal distributions, instead of using the probabilities, we can use what are called the quantiles. And here we can put in the probabilities of 0.14, the mean of 221, and the standard deviation of 21. And now we've got this probability of 0.14. Now we have to decide if we want the lower tail or the upper tail. So when we come back and we look at this, okay, so our numbers are not exactly right. The shaded region is it, but the the ones with the lowest clean weight are off here to the left, or this left side is kind of the worst clean weights. So we know that I want the lower tail, and I can click OK there. And I can know that athletes here who were who did not get at least 198 pounds uh, were not able to enter into this version of the competition. And so we can just take a moment and submit our results and see how we do. And after submitting our results, we see that, yep, we were able to do this. We were able to just figure out a probability, figure out the probability between two points. And then when we are given a specific percentage, we can find out with using the quantiles, the specific value. And let me just go ahead and increase the size. Oop, that's way too much. Let's increase the size a little bit just so that you can see those a little bit better and you can get those answers down. So anyways, I hope that that helps you out with getting through your guide.